G'day guys, Mackie with the Earth Circle, and today we have another episode of Is It Shit? And today we have the Legio Custode Telamon Heavy Dreadnought. So, is it shit? No, it's not. It's actually rather unbalanced in comparison to its cousin, the Leviathan Dreadnought. You see, it's a little bit bigger than the Leviathan, and yeah, okay, you can't get it in squads, but at 300 points, it's only 30 points more than a Leviathan. But what does that 30 points get you? Well, it gives you an extra point of weapon skill, an extra point of strength, and an extra point of initiative. It also gets you torso mounted weaponry, it gets you extra armor, armored ceramite, a multi layered refractor field, move through cover, unyielding sentinel, and indomitable charge. Okay, so if you want to try and get a Leviathan up to something similar to this, say. You want to put the one use only Phosphex launcher on top of it. And you want to give him the Armored Ceramite. Your Leviathan will now be five points more expensive than a stock Telamon. And then maybe you'll be like, oh, you know, I really prefer it with like the Butcher Cannon, maybe. Because, you know, a Leviathan with two Butcher Cannons, that puts out a lot of DACA. Because that's six shots, strength seven, AP three with Sunder. So, which is essentially get to reroll failed armor pens against enemy vehicles. Well, you can do that with the Telamon as well. So, the Telamon, though, when he does it, you get two of these very large weapons called Arachnus Storm Cannons. What do they do, I hear you say? Well, they get an extra shot over the Leviathan's guns but also have an alternate firing mode, Heavy 2 Exoshock. Oh, and that one use only Phosphix Discharger on the Leviathan, which is probably its best weapon, if I'm honest. This bad boy up on top of him here. Yeah, uh, the Spiculus Bolt Launcher on top of the Telamon Dreadnought, which is his version. Yeah, he can use as many times he wants. It's 48 inch range, 5 shots, strength 5, AP 4. Oh, rending as well. Oh, and if you don't move, you get to fire it twice. Compared to the Leviathan's one use only item that he has to pay 15 points for. That seems fair. Alright, well what about toughness? I mean, the Leviathan's a tough dreadnought. Well, the Telamon's got it pepped there as well, because on the Telamon... He has Unyielding Sentinel. If you append him, you actually have to roll two dice and pick the lowest result. So it's similar to a Venerable Dreadnought, but better. Just outright better. Also, Invol-wise, he has a better Invol save. It's a 4+, plus, and against Blast and Templates, is a 3+. Plus. Also, with those guns, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I'm going to anyway. Concentrated Blast, yeah, you have an anti-tank option on those main guns. And if you score a penetrating hit, you get on a D6 roll of a 4+, plus, it becomes two penetrating hits. So, kit it up for Daka, this is better than the Leviathan. Kit it up for combat, though, is it better than the Leviathan? Well, in combat, the Leviathan can cause D3 wounds for each successful wound if it's running with the claw. which is this one here. And it can also take a Siege Wrecker. Both pretty good weapons. But, Telamon, in a combat with a Leviathan, will strike first, thanks to a superior initiative. He'll hit easier, thanks to a superior weapon skill. Now, for his attacks, the Telamon is going to be Strength 10, AP 2. Against individual models, your chance of causing... Instant death, pretty high. On a six to wound, it's just instant death. This guy can one-shot Caselax, Thanatar, Domitar, Praetors, all that kind of thing. Not just through raw strength alone, but through the murder strike. Also, you'll get re-rolls to wound, thanks to Shred. Against um, models that aren't Eternal Warrior, this will be worse, though. The Leviathan will have the superior edge thanks to the fact it can cause multiple wounds for each wound with its claw. But in a one-on-one, -on -one, the Telamon is going to win the fight. Nearly every time. On top of that, um, the Telamon 
and if it's got the two fists, it has the plasma projector, which is basically a heavy flamer, which is AP2 and gets hot. So yeah, don't charge this thing with terminators because you'll probably be throwing a few of them away when you cop an average of um, four to five hits. So <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's just superior in every way for the same sort of points. It's absolutely fucking retarded, and I don't know why this uh, went through with the points it has. I'd be looking at at least a minimum of 30 to 60 points increase on this. Yes, that's getting incredibly close to the points of a knight. However, you've got to remember, a knights are under-costed. They were under-cost when they first came out for what they do. And unlike a knight, this guy is not taking up a lot of war slot. And on top of that... It's not going to sacrifice victory points to the opponent if it gets killed, generally. Because unlike a Lord of War, there is no price of failure for losing a super uh, walker, unlike a super heavy vehicle or a character who's a Lord of War. So yeah, superior in every fucking way to a Leviathan. Three of these in the back line of a Custode army... 900 points. Well, actually, if you're going to kit them out for Dakar, which would be the most effective way to run these guys as uh, unyielding fire support platforms that are very hard to kill, kit it out, sitting in the back of your line, you'd be looking at 360 points each. Three of them, you'd be looking at about 1,080 points. What would you get? Each turn, you would get... 14 Strength 7 AP3 shots at 48 inch range minimum, or 4 Strength 9 AP1 shots at 72 inch range per Dreadnought. So, three of these guys alone would be pumping out uh, 42 Strength 7 AP3 shots per turn. So, it would stuck to be a Marine copying that. On top of that, the Speculus Bolt Launcher, if they're not moving, they'll be pumping out 10 shots each. So you have 10 Strength 5 AP 4 shots, which are rending. So between the two, each turn, you'd be looking at over 70 shots between three fucking walkers. And these are medium to high strength. Strength 7 is where it's sort of that blurry zone between medium and high strength. But... I'll call that high strength because you're going to wound marines on twos and threes with pretty much all these shots and slaughter them. You're going to slaughter Mechanicum stuff thanks to the AP3. You're going to wound Caselix on four pluses and they won't get a save. They'll get a refractor field, that's it. Same with Thalax. Same with pretty much anything in a Solar Auxilia list. Same with pretty much anything in a Militia list. So this is just outright better through sheer weight of fire. And if you're going up against, say, a Knight Army... You can pump out so many Exoshock Lance Rounds. but They're not Lance Rounds, but basically Lance Rounds against them. So, yeah, overpowered as fuck. Thanks for watching the episode. I'll see you all next time.